bed. And before I go to bed, I'm just gonna share that, uh, you know, the last time I see my dad, the story behind that and all that. Those of you that's new to the channel, subscribe, man. Please subscribe. Like the video, do all that good stuff, like I always say. And I just hope everybody's just being positive, uh, you know, watching who they mess with. The reason why I always say that is because, like, my mama and everybody used to tell me that. And, like, I used to think, why did, why she always say that? You know, it always went over my head, but now I see that it did play a big role in, in that, so. And uh, I just hope everybody's just doing good and being positive. And I hope everybody brush their teeth before they go to bed. <laughs> But uh, yeah, this video, I'm, I'm gonna try like to do it all in one cut. So y'all bear with me. <laughs> hey, y'all like my tree? It's my tree, man. Say what's up. I know it's not a big one, but. Oh. Yeah, y'all, the last time I seen my pops, you know, before, I, I guess you could say it was, you know, it was December 3rd, 2009. So the previous night before he died, it was me, my mom, her brother, uh, and my pops. So at that time, it's like, Say about 10 o'clock at night, and my dad was hungry, and uh, he told my uncle to make him something to eat. And I just remember at that time, he ate like five, this is no cap, Pops ate like five ramen noodles with like five eggs in a big bowl with some mayonnaise. Those of you that know this, with some orange, we love mayonnaise. You know, I really, I don't know if like other Polynesian, but I know for a fact some more like we love mayonnaise, but um <laughs> it was me and my dad playing a video game. And we was, we was actually playing that year's Raw versus SmackDown. So whatever game that was out that year, I remember him, uh he was using himself and I was using um I really used anybody on him. We played multiple games that night, but uh I just remember like that that specific time. And uh, I was just beating him. <laughs> he used to get mad. And he was like, uh, man, let's play Halo. And Halo, he used to. My dad used to be real good at uh, playing Halo. Um, my brothers know that. Like, everybody. Everybody that play games with my dad, they know that. And, uh, yeah, I just remember, like, it, the, the memory, like, right now is kind of, I can't just tell you exactly, obviously, what happened that day because I was so young. And, you know, time, as I know y'all know, as time flies by, it's just like, some things you can't just remember, but I do remember like the main part. So after that, I had to go to sleep. I had uh, school the next day. My mom was like, hey, you gotta go to sleep. Turn the game off. The last the last time he just told me, all right, son, I see you tomorrow. I love you. Gave him a big hug, big hug. And yeah, I went I went back to his room. You know, at that time, I mean, I had, I had my own room upstairs, but you know, I'm young and I never wanted to sleep by myself at that age, so. I was sleeping with my mom and dad, so I went in the room and I laid down with my mom. And uh, yeah, that was like the last interaction that I had with my dad. So I woke up the next morning. It was just a regular morning. 
you know, my mom wake me up, uh, make me breakfast. As she's making me breakfast, I'm getting ready. Uh, I did take the bus. I was going to Benignus Elementary over there in Winrose. Uh, yeah, I just remember just getting up, getting ready, and my mom rushing me to make sure I, I make the bus. And I remember seeing my dad laying on the ground. And, uh, it's close by the living room. And uh, hopefully when I shoot the vlog of the house that we stayed in, I'll show y'all exactly where he was laying down. And uh, I didn't read, I don't know now as far as like the stories behind that, I know they have different stories on, or oh, they found my dad on the couch bleeding or my mom found him on the couch. When I seen him, I'm just speaking from why I seen him. <clears throat> And uh, he was laying on the ground. It's, it's like a, a little playroom right next to the living room. He was just laying on the ground. I just, I seen him. He was just, the mouth open. It wasn't moving. But I'm just thinking that he's tired, you know? Because my dad used to be on the road like 24 7. And I know every time he come back, I know he's tired. Um, it was just one of those, I don't know, like nothing was really just going through my head. Oh, dang, there's something wrong with him. But I did go over there and I walked over there. And I just remember seeing him. And I was like, Dad, I'm Dad, I'm finna go to school, I'm finna go to school. And uh, no response. Uh, one thing I, I could like tell at a young age, like nobody's body is like cold, like that cold. So I did touch him, I feel him, he was real, real cold. And uh, yeah, I went straight, ran to the bus. I remember the bus was already there, so I ran to the bus and um, yeah, I was at school and I'll say about one o'clock sometime after lunch, um, they called my name. It was like, hey, uh, you have an early dismissal. So I'm like, man, what the hell? Usually when I get an early dismissal, I remember like my mom or my dad or my uncle, they would tell me like way ahead of time, like, hey, we finna come pick you up. But this time it was like out of nowhere, you know? Um, yeah, I just remember like walking down the hallway. I'm like, damn, what the hell? What's wrong? Or I'm thinking like we probably got to go somewhere with my brothers or somewhere. I don't, I don't know. It was just confusing. So, yeah, I, I walked to the front office and I see my uncle. And I could just tell like something was wrong, like something, something was off. And uh, I go up there, I say, what's up, on? And he was like, uh, we got to go, we got to go, we got to go. I'm like, all right, all right, I got everything. He was like, okay, come on, let's go. So we hopped in the car, and I remember going back to the house, and uh, my uncle just told me to stay in the car. And then he went to go, he went somewhere in the house to get something. And uh, he was like, come on, we finna go pick your brothers up. So I go, we go pick my brothers up. I think they're practicing football or something. And, uh, I just remember waiting in the car and I'm like, damn, why are we picking up my brothers? Like, why are we picking up everybody? So, uh, yeah, he got them. They came in the car and I was, I was, I was tired that day. So I kind of like, I remember dozing off and then boom, we woke up and we was in front of a hospital. And I'm like, Unc, what we, uh, what, what are we doing here? Why are we here? And he was like, it's your dad. But I'm gonna tell y'all this, I'm gonna be real. Like when he told me that, I'm like, I'm like, damn, my dad must have got hurt from wrestling or he probably broke a bone or something. You know, I'm at, at that is, I'm not really just thinking like, damn, he's in a death situation or, you know? <laughs> and you know, at that age, I wasn't just thinking like he was dying or nothing. I just thought, like, I'm not gonna lie to you. I used to look at my dad like as a God, like my dad would never get hurt or like my dad was invincible, you know? But, uh, yeah, I just remember going to the hospital and my uncle asked, where's he at, where's he at? And uh, she said, he's in that room. So I just remember going and I seen all my brothers, like I just looked at them, like they would never give me eye contact. None of my brothers really just, none of my brothers uh, gave me eye contact. And uh, I was the last one, like I was all in, I was following them. My uncle was like, hurry up, hurry up, come on, come on, we gotta go. And uh, he's in this room. So we go and have in mind, y'all, I'm, I'm the last one in line. Like I'm the last one to get to the room where my dad was. 
And I just, you know, when I hit that corner, it was like, it was crazy. Like, I seen him connected to, you know, all the wires, the machine. I seen all, like, a bunch of blood all over him. And um, I seen my mom, you know, on her knees, like, right next to him, holding his hand, crying. And uh, as soon as we go in, uh, uh, my mom was told the doctors, now, can they give us a second? So I do remember exactly, like, when we, when we, everybody took a knee around him. And I just remember looking, like, looking around, seeing everybody cry. And I thought something was wrong because at first I ain't cried. Like, I'm like, nah, he gone. I think my dad gonna be good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see my dad tomorrow. You know? I'm gonna be like, in my head, I'm like, nah, he ain't gonna die. He ain't gonna die. So, I wanna say about, about 30 minutes go by, the doctors coming in, and they say, we have to, uh, some of y'all, like majority of y'all have to leave. The mom, you can stay here, or the wife, you can stay here. So I remember we left, we went in the waiting room, and uh, yeah, I just remember sitting in there, and I see my brothers, and you know, my brothers crying, like crying, they pouring their eyes out, you know? And I'm just sitting there, I'm just sitting there thinking like, damn, something wrong with me. I'm like, why am I, why am I not crying? Why am I not like, you know, sad and then, but uh, you know, it didn't hit me to I saw my mom and them in the other room. But not. Nah. The doctors told my mom, like, there's, there's uh, nothing we can do. <laughs> Man, oh. Crazy. Yeah, the doctor was like, we can't keep giving him meds because if we do, he's going to get worse and worse. So my mom took us in the room. She's like, what y'all want to do? I ain't never really just told the story like this to anybody, really. So y'all my first. But uh, we end up saying that we was gonna, you know, cut them loose. You feel me? So that's why I knew I like them. Pops ain't coming back. And uh. We went back in there. Oh, we decided to like, you know, cut them loose. We, you know, take them out the machine. So, when we walked back, I just seen everybody like, like all my cousins, and my uncle. They pulled up. They pulled up fast. You had people that was flying in. I seen Booker. I seen uh, some of some of my dad, some of my other dad's friends. You know. So we go in there, 
uh, it's me, my mama, all my brothers. We just sitting on, on one side of my dad while everybody was just coming in and saying bye to him. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was the last time I like really had that interaction with my pops. You know what I'm saying? So, I didn't even know I was gonna cry this much. I ain't gonna lie to y'all telling this story. So, but uh. Hey man, shake back, Zilla. But yeah, everybody said they buy some, gave him a hug and all that. And uh, we just left. Yeah, I remember, I remember after that, yeah, everybody went to my crib. You know what I'm saying? My brother friends was there, everybody was there. Some of my friends, my mom's friends, everybody was at the crib after that. Oh, there's another thing I want to share with y'all too. Like, you know, my this is my dad died on December fourth. EJ, his birthday was three days later. I ain't know what to say to my brother, you know? But, uh, that was the last interaction, like, from the day that my dad was alive, from the day, like, the night before, and then the night of that he, you know what I'm saying, he died. But yeah, that, that, that was it, like, it was, instead of taking his death as, like damn, okay, we gotta do this for dad. We we gotta, you know what I'm saying? Continue to be positive. Continue to we ain't we ain't do that. Like we just it just went downhill for everybody, for my mama, you know, for my older brother, BJ, Nah, then me. But you know, it, it shouldn't have been an excuse for us, you know. Like we could have we could have kept on progressing, but you know, at that time when we always lost. Y'all, that you know, that's it, y'all. It wasn't. Those are like the main things that I remember. Last time I interacted with my pop. Uh, what else I'm gonna say? But yeah, it, it shouldn't have been no excuse for us to go downhill. We could have just kept, you know, what I'm saying, going up, but. Now, you know, today we gonna shake back from it. You know, I'm home. Uh, I got a plan. I know I know what I stand on, I know my values, I know my morals. You know, and I'm just taking it one day at a time. That's all we can do, y'all. So, anybody that's just not coming home for the pen, man, like, we can do it. You know, you gotta have a plan. And, uh, right now, I'm just trying to set the example for people that's coming home and for my mom and my brothers. And uh, yeah, that's all, we, that's all it is right now, y'all. Just shaking back, trying to get my life together, uh, do it the right way, try to be positive, try to uplift everybody that's around me and just be real to myself and, and stay loyal to my blueprint. You know, my blueprint is like, like I say, my plan to success, my plan to greatness, y'all. So y'all just stay tuned. Uh, I'm sorry for all this crying. I ain't even know I was gonna cry like this. I, I, I ain't know, like, like I said, I ain't really just told nobody what I just told y'all. Like, I ain't really just sit down and do that. So, I'ma holler at y'all tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let's get it. Let's stay up. Let's stay positive as always. And, and uh, never lose faith, y'all. Never lose faith. Even when all odds against you, just never lose faith. Keep fighting. You know, we gonna get the I appreciate y'all.